Hello everyone, this is Sarah Warren, sophomore at Towson University, and this is my next video on play. And the video that I'm going to be talking about here is going to be about a work called A Study of the Play Element in Culture. Mainly, I'll be discussing Chapter 1, Nature and Significance of Play as a Cultural Phenomenon by Jay Zinga. We as humans need time for relaxation, whether you might be doing taxes to relax and get away from family issues while, well, for me, it's playing the piano. Zinga states something very interesting that I found. is that uh, He says that we have the innate urge to exercise a certain faculty or in the desire to dominate or complete. Now for me, playing the piano is my way of completing and succeeding in that. And some people might think that, well, playing piano shouldn't count as play, as we're discussing today. Well, why not? Playing piano for me is like playing a game for a child. I remember when I was a child, we would make believe games with my neighborhood friends, and we would just run around the yard and make up our own rules, and that was fun. Well, piano for me, that is my version of play. All play, as the text stated that I recognize, is that all play is voluntary. It's a voluntary activity. It can be serious or non-serious, and that is up for debate. Um, playing piano, again, that can be serious or non-serious, in a sense that, well, seriousness, that I would be playing in a recital and taking it seriously, say, having a job in it, and any little mistake would be a burden on myself for the next week and a half or so. Non-serious in the text, they talked about laughter and how kids enjoy playing games, and obviously that means the game can be non-serious. Um, so on, but, uh, Another thing that I notice in the text is that play consists of its own course and meaning. Now, what does that mean in terms of playing piano? Um, playing piano has such a special meaning to me. It's not even something I can verbalize. It's just when I play, it, it just takes me into another reality, like mentioned in the text, that playing takes you step out of reality. When I'm playing, it I'm not focused on anything else but the piano. Um, but to be more distinct with playing piano, there's there can be rules, obviously, with playing a measure. You play it how it's played in the written music, and that's like following the rules to a game. But then there's the chance that you have your artistic styling and changing the music. So... I don't know, it's just for me, when I play piano, I only focus on that. And when, for example, when a child is playing a game, such as tic-tac-toe, they can get very upset if you're trying to interrupt their game. It's, it's the same thing for me. It's just like the last video we did on games. Game and play are so connected. It's, I mean, I, I felt that that was an obvious thing, but the last video, I barely understood how to define play. I was trying to explain it to you guys, but I thought, like, wow, do I really know what play means? Like. I only know to have it, explain it in terms of piano, so hopefully this will help. Now I'm going to show you what it's like to play piano and not focus on anything else. messed up. Did I do that on purpose? You will never know. But this is a perfect entrance into playing games and having a spoiled sport. Now, I knew what this meant the second I thought of it. I thought, wow, me and my friends would make up a game called Slime Monster, which is basically freeze tag um, and combination of that and flag football. Well, if you didn't follow the rules, there's always that person that's breaking the rules and tags you and you're it. But and then the other kid gets mad saying, hey, you're not allowed to do that. Or when you're play playing Trivial Pursuit, like I mentioned in my last video, if you're playing with my sister, I moved her piece by accident. We had Hers was fuchsia and mine was purple, so I started moving her piece by accident. 
She thought I was doing it on purpose to make her lose. And the entire day, she was angry with me. And why is that? Play is such a serious thing. People don't even realize how intense we can get and just go back to that day where we were kids again so easily. A spoiled sport would be, for piano, would be that, well, I messed up. And someone, like my instructor, would point out, hey, you're not doing that right. Start over. Well, that's kind of in a different sense, but uh, I'll give you another example of spoiled sport. Say I'm playing a Hammond warm-up. I'll play the very first one to make it easy. It's just a variation of C, E, F, G, A, and you go down, and then you go up. Okay. Then it goes up and up and up, it comes down and down and down. Well, for each Hannon exercise, all, there's a total of 60 of them. So it takes 60 minutes to play all of them. Obviously, I'm not going to play all of them because that would take an hour. I'm not even going to play the whole entire first one because it's a full minute and I'm already wait talking so much, so I'll just play part of it. And I'll show you a couple examples of a spoiled sport. In terms of interpretation of music, people can change it however they want. Well, sometimes there's a rule, like playing a game, it has to be the same way each time, unless you don't feel like following the rules. This is a perfect example because it's a variation of notes, and yes, of course, I have to play at the same speed, but what if I didn't want to? What if I wanted to change it up? What if I wanted to improvise? Then there would be that spoiled sport saying, you're not following the 4-4 measures. You're not following the proper time timing. You're speeding up. You're slowing down. You're not playing it right. Then again, for example, in jazz, people accept it so freely. It just, that's what jazz is. So, I'll just play an example. <laughs> example of spoiled sport. I can be a spoiled sport by not following the rules and doing whatever the heck I want. Um, now he, he, we discussed this in class, how, how, what is play? What, it, it's such, even with games, it's such a hard, difficult thing. We spent 50 minutes trying to define what a game was. And I raised my hand and I said, well, can a game be fun? That's not, we haven't discussed that. The teacher told us, oh, well, let's discuss that later. And now I know why, because now that we've read this article about play, it associates itself more in that. And the entire text that I read, it didn't say whether games and play should be serious or should be fun or should be not fun. There's different characteristics of play, and it means something differently to each person. And why do we play? Well, people think, okay, well, that it's... Kids play. Older people don't play. Well, I just played for you. And what about other species? One important thing, it was actually on the very first page of the first chapter of this reading by Zynga. And he says that we aren't the only species that plays. He says, and I quote, Animals play just like men. They invite one another to play by a certain ceremonious of attitude and gestures. Don't we do the same thing? I've had situations where I'm going to my friend's house and visiting them, and we always have what we would call jam sessions. Someone would just go up to the piano and just start playing chords. And just everyone would be like, oh, that sounds like this song. Let's all sing it, because we were all chorus kids and played instruments in high school and everything. But um, it's the same thing. I can make a gesture to you and say, hey, come over here. That's my gesture. Or I'll just start playing. That'll be my way of saying that I want to play music and someone else will follow along and just start playing other chords, you know? Um, but yeah, I've been rambling on this for a while because I really found this one very interesting. Because playing, I use that word in almost every single video of mine. It's, 
it's awesome. <laughs> but the funny thing was, when I messed up earlier, I was playing my songs and stuff for you guys. I'm looking into your video now for this, and I'm realizing, wow, I was playing piano, not focusing on you guys, but there's still you. You're still on my YouTube listening to me talk and talk and play music. And it's funny because isn't YouTube making a video stepping out of reality? Isn't that kind of like playing? It can be serious, like I'm talking about this seriously. It can be fun. And in terms of another example is fractals. Um, this is perfect because fractals explains how nothing, basically nothing is perfect. Nothing can be exact every single time. I can play my music however I want it. You can make up a game and play it however you, you would want to. You don't need to follow the rules. And sure, you can, but it's always going to be played differently. Well, that's enough of me rambling about playing for one day. Thanks for watching. This is Sarah Warren signing out on Philosophy and Music.